I'm Christina from The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. Happy New Year. I don't know about you, but I'm always searching in the new year to get organized. And as a single mom and a full-time middle school science teacher, along with a small business owner, things are busy and it's so important for me to stay on top of it with being organized. I want to share with you some of the things I have done in my craft space so I'm able to finish more projects and spend less time with stuff that doesn't matter and more time creating. It is important that you have a space that is dedicated to what you like to do. If you like to paint furniture, you're going to need a space to paint it. You're also going to need a space for storage. And it is so important that you lay out all of your supplies in one spot. See how much of it you really have and how many duplicates you have. Going through and organizing your space and seeing what you have will not only save you time in the long run, but it'll save you money. As you sort your supplies, you might find that you have two and three of some things and you won't have to purchase more. If you have all of your items in one spot, you'll know where they are and you'll know your inventory with a quick glance. I have this old bookcase behind me that I use for my paint storage and I love it. Now, this is just a portion of my paint storage. I do have two locations because I have so much paint, but having it all in one spot makes it so much easier when I'm working on a project because I can just grab it and go. Another thing that I like to do is I group like objects together. Right behind me are all my DIY paint products and I'm also going to show you my brushes. I found some really cute little containers. I didn't spend any money. These were all containers I had around the house and I sorted out my brushes using these containers. All stencil brushes are all put into the same container. That way, when I'm working on a project, I just grab the container I need and go. You don't have to spend a lot of money to find things to organize your supplies. I also have a cart for my paint. It works really, really well. It's a cart that I purchased at Ikea a couple of years ago. And that way I can roll it to wherever location I'm working on my projects, whether it's inside or outside. It's a whole lot easier to have my supplies all in one spot. Another secret that I use is I love to store my paint in FIFO bottles. FIFO stands for first in, first out. These bottles are fabulous. There is no more wasting time opening paint cans and getting all those little crusties around the edges. Instead, whenever I want to paint with my project, I can just squeeze and go. I really like it to be that simple while I'm painting. I also really like that I can literally squirt the paint right onto the piece, saving me so much more time and energy. I have a secret obsession with Ziploc bags and they are wonderful for organization. They can hold so many objects for you and keep you organized. I use them, of course, when I'm taking hardware off of all of my pieces of furniture. I will put the hardware into a Ziploc bag, label it with a permanent marker, and then usually throw it in the drawer of the piece that I'm working on. If I'm working on multiple pieces, I have a bucket where I store the hardware that is not on the pieces that are in Ziploc bags. That way I know I'm not searching all over my house for the hardware for the piece of furniture. It's always gonna be in that bucket. I also use my Ziploc bags for my wet brushes in between projects. I mean, we're all limited on time, right? You're not gonna just probably get a whole day to completely work on and finish your pieces. You're probably gonna have to stop and start a bit. And that's not a problem, but who likes to wash brushes every five seconds? If you're in the middle of a project, and you get interrupted or you've run out of free time to paint, I will stick my paintbrush into a Ziploc bag and seal it. My paintbrushes can stay fresh and ready for me whenever I come back to it. They don't dry out and they don't get gross. Just don't misplace any of your Ziploc bags. I've done that before. If it happens, you can soak your brushes in a little fabric softener and then wash as normal. 
I talked a little bit about workspace. It's really important that you have a dedicated space to work. You need to find a location, whether it is a craft room if you're lucky enough, or maybe it's part of your dining room when you're not using the dining room table. Wherever it is, make sure that how you set up that room allows you to have plenty of space to work on whatever you might need. Another item I love to use are wheels or furniture dollies on my pieces. I have a whole bunch that I like to use. I use these because one, I can move pieces out of the way. So if my workspace is too jammed, I can just put some rollers underneath the pieces and move them out of the way so I have plenty of room for my next piece. I also paint my pieces with them on. It's really important when you're painting, if you're all set up, you have all your supplies, to let the piece do all the work. You can roll it around however you need. You get to sit still and devote all of your energy into making that piece beautiful. Besides having workspace, you need to have storage space, you know, for those projects or those curbside treasures that you just can't pass up. I know many of you are also very limited in this aspect, and even if it's only just a Tupperware container that you keep for cool things that you're someday going to work on, it's important to put all of your items in one location or one spot in your house. Why? Because then you know what you have. You know what your projects are. Another thing you should do is at least once a year go through your pile and weed it out. If there's something you keep pushing to the back or to the bottom of the pile, there's probably a reason. Maybe you just don't really want to work on that, and that's fine too. It's important that not only are you working on the pieces you want to, but that you're not wasting the valuable space with the pieces that you will never get to. Another thing you want to keep in mind with your project pile is that it doesn't get too big. You can only work on so many pieces. Now, because I do this for a business and I'm usually painting a few pieces a month, I do get a bit panicked when my garage space and my storage space runs too low. I know pretty much how many pieces I will need to make it through a year. If I can't close my garage and I can't have that empty space to add a few cool treasures I find along the way, I also start to get worried. So make sure to keep weeding things out and don't have too many projects. Having a large unfinished project pile can also be a drain on you and you can start to feel like, you know, you're never going to get those projects completed. So it's a good idea to kind of keep that project pile low and reasonable. One thing you can do with your project pile is you can weed out your furniture pieces or your pieces and keep parts for salvage. Maybe you decide that there's no way you're ever going to get that dresser painted and you really never liked the style anyways, but someone gave it to you free. Does this sound familiar? It happens to me a lot. But maybe as you're looking at it, you notice the hardware on that piece is absolutely gorgeous. So when you're weeding out your salvage pile, you might want to go through and keep some things you might need for later dates. As you're looking at your project pile, it's also really important to prioritize them. You might even want to group things together, all the items that still need to be sanded before you get started, all the items for repairs. And if you live in an area that's a cold climate like I do in Michigan, some of those projects are going to be nearly impossible or very cold to achieve during the winter time if you don't have a heated garage space. So what I like to do is I try to kick out as many projects as those as possible so that I am ready for wintertime projects that don't need as much outdoor sanding or huge repairs that are gonna be time consuming. I don't always achieve my goals, but I really try to. If you wanna find out more information about how I organize my garage workspace before winter comes, check out this video here. Do you have enough stuff to do your project? If you're refinishing furniture like I am, do you have enough wood glue? Do you have long enough clamps for all of your projects if you decide to do two of them at one time? All of those little items that you use often, you should have a surplus on hand. I mean, around here, I might get socked in with tons of snow, not being able to leave for days, but that is the perfect time to finish my projects. So make sure when you get the opportunity to do your work that you have some of the basic supplies that you're gonna need. And getting organized will really help because maybe you'll find a whole bunch of wood glues that you didn't even know you had.
If you are in need of extra supplies, I sell many of the items that I mentioned in this video in my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall in Lincoln Park, Michigan, and in my online store at shoptheturnedleg.com. For any of the items that I do not sell, I will put links in the description box below. It's always a good day if you have paint on your hands, and my goal in the new year is to do more painting and get more of my projects completed. If you have the same goals, I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any tips or tricks that you use in organization, please drop them in the links below to share them with others. Thanks so much for watching and have a very happy 2021.